Hey, what's going on guys? This is David with Random Tech Tips. And if you're new here and haven't signed up for the giveaway that I have going on for the Ryzen 3 2200G, make sure you check out the link in the description below to get signed up for your chance to win. All right, so today I'm comparing the new Ryzen 5 2400G APU against the older but still very popular i7 4770K CPU from Intel. And the results might actually surprise you. Stay tuned. Alright, so many of you have been waiting for my next set of benchmarks where I test the 2400G with both 4GB and 8GB of 2400MHz RAM. Uh, and I promise those are coming, but when I was getting ready to start those benchmarks, I noticed a few things when comparing the 2400G to my current workhorse CPU, the i7-4770K. First, the core and thread number for both the CPUs were the exact same, with both CPUs having four cores and eight threads. And additionally, I noticed that the core and boost clocks were practically identical. Now, the Ryzen 5 2400G actually is rated at stock 3.6 gigahertz per second with a 3.9 boost clock and the i7-4770K is only at 3.5 gigahertz per second with a 3.9 boost clock. However, that difference is pretty negligible, at least I thought it was. So with these new discoveries, it made me divert to the topic of today's video, which I am comparing the two CPUs to see if there's any real advantage to using the drastically cheaper 2400G CPU over my i7-4770K in my main rig for day-to-day -day use. So as a disclaimer, I did actually disable the onboard graphics in the BIOS for the 2400G. And I'm not sure if that had any positive effects on performance overall, but I did want to make sure that it at least uh, didn't create any room for it to affect the performance of just the CPU negatively because I would be using an onboard discrete graphics card with my uh, GTX 980 EVGA edition. So since the 2400G has been as low as only $150 in the United States recently, I didn't think that these two CPUs would even be close, but oh how wrong I was. All of the following tests I'm about to talk about were ran with the same EVGA GTX 980 graphics card like I said earlier, but obviously due to the generational and platform differences, the motherboard and RAM had to be different. The 4770K system used a Gigabyte Z87 chipset ITX motherboard, and it ran 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM at 2400 MHz. The 2400G system used a Biostar X370 chipset, and that's an ATX motherboard, with again, 8 gigabytes of 2400 MHz RAM, but obviously this is DDR4 RAM instead of DDR3. Since the RAM is running at the same speed, we should have eliminated the major concern in testing on the two different generations, or so I thought. But based on the results that I got, it actually makes me wonder if using DDR3 RAM could be the cause of the performance decrease that you'll see throughout the video. I don't know, so if you do, please let me know in the comments below. All right, so for the first set of benchmarks, I looked at the Cinebench OpenGL test, which utilizes graphics as well. But since both systems had the same card, I figured any differences observed would be related to the CPU only. As you can see, we noticed an increase of six frames per second using the 2400G. While that is not much, it's still an increase on such an inexpensive chip. Going to the next benchmark, we're still in Cinebench. However, this time we're just measuring the CPU. We see an almost 200 Cinebench score bump in the 2400G over the 4770K. And if you're not familiar with Cinebench benchmarks and how they calculate them, you can head on over to their website to see what all goes into that. However, a good rule of thumb is the higher the number, the better. Since I do a lot of editing in Premiere Pro, I was curious to see how both CPUs handled a 15 minute 1080p 60 frame per second clip in terms of render time. The i7-4770K finished the task in about 17 minutes, whereas the 2400G took only a little over 11 minutes. 
The next benchmark was the CPU Queen benchmark in IDA64. And the 2400G again came out ahead of the 4770K at 51,406 compared to 47,052. Again, think higher is better. Using CPU-Z, I measured both single and multi-core performance for both chips. And as seems to be the norm, the 2400G came out ahead by narrow margins. RealBench benchmarking software was next, and there were five different benchmarks within the suite that I tested. The first was the image editing benchmark, where again the 2400G narrowly edged the older 4770K. Uh, encoding is where we actually see a huge leap, uh, which when we compare this to our Premiere results, it makes a lot of sense that the 2400G scored almost double that of the 4770K. OpenCL provided another close race with the 2400G edging out the victory. And the heavy multitasking benchmark is where we see yet another major gap in performance where the 2400G almost doubles the performance of the 4770K. Although there were two benchmarks with vastly different scores, the overall system score total wasn't too badly skewed, but the 2400G did hold a solid 20,000 lead coming in at 91,000 over 70,000. Again, if you're interested to see what these scores actually mean and how they're calculated, head on over to the RealBench website. TimeSpy, which is a benchmark that more people are familiar with, showed us more of the same in terms of CPU performance, where the 2400G beats out the Intel chip in both the CPU specific tests as well as the overall score when it starts factoring in the graphics card. Firestrike mimics this with the 2400G performing better in both the physics test and the overall score. The physics test, I believe, tests CPU performance, but regardless, we saw the 2400G winning in both categories. Since I don't have all of my games installed on an SSD or hard drive that I can easily move between machines, I've only got one game to test, and I figured PUBG was one of the best due to how poorly it's optimized in general and its dependence on a good CPU. The 2400G saw a 20 frame per second jump over the 4770K while playing both at 1080p on ultra settings. So that's it guys. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm extremely surprised that the 2400G performs as well as it does, especially when comparing it to the 4770K and the price you can expect to pay for one of those. If you check out Hardware Unbox, they actually recently did a comparison video of the 4770K and some of the newer chips and their difference were pretty minor. That means that this $150 Ryzen 5 2400G is on par with a $300 plus Intel chip. Let that sink in. Once I finish benchmarking the 2400G, I plan to make the switch while I await the new uh, Intel and AMD CPU launches later this year, so I'll update you if I come across anything funky. As always, if you like this content and you want to see more, make sure you click that thumbs up button and get subscribed. If you have any questions or you want to see something on the channel that I haven't covered yet, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, I'll tag you later.